Uh, so we're moving on to surface area here. Now, uh, surface area of a three-dimensional shape. You can see I've got a whole bunch of 3D shapes here. Now, the surface area of a shape, you can think of it in two different ways. Now, if you were to take this cube, say, and paint each face, uh, you would need to know how much paint you would need. Now, the surface that you're painting is the surface area. Um, so either a painter needs to know sort of how big the surface area of something is, or also if you were trying to make any of these shapes, let's say you were like a metal worker and you were trying to make any of these shapes, you would need to know how much metal you would need if you're making like a hollow shape. So you'd see, need, um, for a cube for example, you'd need six equal squares. But uh, we need to know how big each of those squares is and how much the total area is. So uh, a metal worker as well might need to know how much the surface area of something is. Uh, now being able to find the surface area of these shapes really depends upon you being able to draw what's called a net. Now, and you, you, I'm not too bothered about how uh, accurate the nets are that you draw, as long as they're the basic idea. So, uh, the things that you've seen before, but I'll just jump through some of them really quickly. So here's our cube. Now the net of a cube is just six equal squares. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see that if you if that was made of paper, this shape right now, and you folded it up along these creases and sticky taped it together, you'd end up with a cube. Now finding the uh, surface area of a cube is very, very simple. You just find the area of one of these shapes and uh, multiply it by six. So the surface area of a cube is equal to uh, length times width times six. So it's one of these, so length times width times six. I should have put another line in there. Okay, uh, that's a cube. Now we're not going to do any other formulas in today's uh, video. The only thing we're going to do is draw the nets so we get a good idea of what we're dealing with when we do these. Here's a rectangular prism. Now this is slightly different. Now depending on what kind of rectangular prism it is, there are other ways you can draw them. Okay, now you need to be really careful here because if those shapes are di if those lengths are different, two by three uh, by let's say five, it means the length along here is going to be five. This is going to be three, and this is going to be two, and this is going to be three, and this is going to be two. So it actually means that this rectangle and this rectangle are the same. This rectangle and this rectangle are the same. And this rectangle and this rectangle are the same. So there's three different shapes inside of a um, rectangular prism. Possibly two if the f ends of it are square. Okay, I'll move along here. Here's a triangular prism. Now that's going to look like one, two, three rectangles and triangles there. Now each of those rectangles might be a different size depending on what kind of triangle you've got on the end there. Those two triangles however will always be the same shape, the same size. Okay I'll move along. Now when it comes to a uh, cylinder, if you want to draw the net of a cylinder, I'll use a different color, if you want to draw the net of a cylinder, what you've actually got is two circles. And attached to those, sorry, let's try that again. You've actually got two circles, proper circles, and connecting that is a curvy piece of metal. It's actually a rectangle when you when you bring it all out. Um, now that's going to be the height of the shape, and this length is actually the circumference of that circle. So the formula for that's quite complicated. We'll cover that in another video.
Uh, I'll just finish off my uh, exploration of nets here with my pyramid, which is, if it's a square based pyramid, it's a square on the bottom, and four triangles. Now those four, tri if it's a square based pyramid, those four triangles will be the same. If it's a rectangular based pyramid, that's going to be more complicated, but I don't think we're going to be covering anything like that. Uh, finally, this one gets to be a bit of a surprise every time I do it. It's a cone. There's a circle, yes. But then this shape on the top, if you were to take that off and flatten it out, you'd actually end up with... a sector of a circle. Okay, so our job over the next couple of videos is to be able to find the surface area, that is the area of these nets, uh, pretty much all of them. Um, some of them we're going to try to learn sort of intuitively, some of them we're going to learn with some formulas.